So welcome not to the refreshing views observatory but to the beautiful island of Tenerife and in this video we're going to see some amazing portable imaging setups, have a look at the sun in a double stacked solar telescope, use a travel setup to find Omega Centauri and a comet in the eyepiece, do some live stacking of deep sky objects, observe the planets in the daytime So we've flown out to the island of Tenerife, traveling from 51 degrees north back in England to 28 degrees north, so we're much further south. And we've got a week staying here at 2,000 meters above sea level, well above the cloud layer. And it's quite a dark sight. We're away from the light pollution, so the skies are going to be truly amazing. And coming south means our old friends in the Milky Way are so much higher, we get to see new objects that, that simply aren't visible from back home. But no, it's just epic. It's dark um, and we've got everything. It's just like a a pseudo observatory you you rock up and it's all here but actually it's much better to come here and they're an additional you know 20 you know 20 whatever degree, it is yeah. degrees up and uh, you're through less atmosphere and therefore you get a nicer picture so uh, just they're nice and high still aren't they they're they're still and even though i can get them from uh, in the uk i tend not to observe in the uk so uh, it's far far nicer and more comfortable out here and that's the good thing about coming to a place like this is you can immerse yourself i wouldn't get the amount of time you know in hour after hour so this is my telescope in a suitcase i bought one of these vanguard travel cases and what i really love about this is everything fits in one case spine viewer eyepieces diagonal sketching kit all in one case just one thing to grab pick up the mount pick up the bag we're outside so this is my setup, this is a Williams Optics Megrade 90 and I've got that mounted on an AZ4 Skywatcher, AWITZ4, it's an Altas mount. Very simple, no motors, no polar alignments, no meridian flips and I'm up and running in literally minutes. In terms of eyepieces, I'm really enjoying using the TechnoSky Linear Bino View. I've got a pair of 30mm Nacklers in there and that's just about a 2 degree field of view at about 40 times magnification, so really nice field of view. Right, so that's me set up. Let's go and see what everybody else is doing. Senor Pipa, what have we got here? We have an ED80 telescope. ED80. Um, on the front, we've got two 50mm lumped etalons. Yep. So together they're double stacked. Fantastic. Um, we then have a blocking filter and an eyepiece. So you use your same telescope for the night time as the daytime? I do indeed, yes. Um, the etalons at the front take up have energy rejection so it's now safe yeah so although at this point it'll be incredibly bright it won't actually burn you so it just it dazzle you and then the blocking filter really reduces the brightness uh, i see so you can see I so with the same focus. same telescope you can observe the sun in the daytime and the stars at the night time yeah perfect and the cloud at any time and the cloud at any time i live in fear that i haven't screwed my telescope on down so i'm glad to say i'm not the only one who then nervously checks everything I'm panicking. So while that's just looking around, Ian, we were talking earlier that you have your tripod. One tripod leg is shorter than the other, so that you can reach north, the North Star. And why was that? Remind me, was that because you can? So this um, this axis has to point pol more or less towards Polaris, um, but this mount won't allow you to go down that, quite that far. So by having that leg slightly shorter. This bit is slightly tilted, but only a and, smidge, and then you can, then get, you can still reach north. Up. Yes. This is a solar finder. Sunlight comes in through this hole and projects on the screen at the back. So that sun image projected there. Yeah, that little should, dot. hopefully. So what does that do? The second, putting the second. Who do you remember? What's the on the etalon? Um, this gives a, a bandwidth of, I think, 0.75 angstroms, and this brings it down to 0.5. I oh, think. so it's just a tighter, so finer a control. Tighter. And and with the two, you should. Fingers crossed, get better surface detail. Oh, okay, brilliant. Filaments. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so this is Mr. Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello. <laughs> Hello. This is your grab and go. This is what you bought in your suitcase. Yes. On suitcases. The suitcases. Plural, <laughs> all four of them. So what have we got here then? So we have a Burla back tripod, a Paramount Mighty. So the small 15 kilo rest it on the palm of your hand uh, tripod um, mount. And then we've got um, uh, a Skywatcher Esprit 120 ED. Fantastic. And then a QHY168C colour camera, 
and then a little ZWO1 ASI120 just for the on a little finder for um, doing guiding. This is an, such an awesome. I can't believe I look at my little telescope in the mount and I carried that quite happily. You were obviously quite laden down, were you? Uh, yes. It, uh, <laughs> this is. Uh, we always say with astronomy though and travelling, it's about friends and friends yeah. <laughs> helping you. Uh, because this weighs more than me. And then you've got all the accessories, the counterweight, the batteries, the extension cable, yeah. chairs, tables. Yeah, and you've got probably nine kilos here, plus five kilos just on the bar itself. Have and, you got the kitchen um, sink? And the kitchen sink, no. And then there's a battery here, a little 12 um, amp hour battery just for using the flat panel that I have to take uh, flats at the end of the evening. So what have you been imaging then? What are, what of targets have you had so far? So we've had Omega Centauri, which so has been really great. I mean, an, an Omega Centauri in this setup oh. fills the field of view. It's really lovely. And then a bunch of Messier objects. I've been trying to get some of the open clusters of Messier objects that I can't get. Well, I can get from home, but they're so low down in the weeds that actually it's much better to come here and they're an additional, you know, 20, you know, 20 whatever degree, it is, yeah. degrees up and uh, you're through less atmosphere and therefore you get a nicer picture and you don't suffer with clouds dew no clouds uh, limited no dew. daylight oh fantastic what a setup i can't believe you brought this all with you it's absolutely no, awesome i can't believe i bought it most <laughs> people say it's bigger than me so why and heavier than yeah. me yeah why what a setup but it does work right it, you put it down and it works so that's so, what you get isn't it with yeah. this with high quality setup isn't it yeah, it is yeah fantastic right thanks dave you're welcome so send your peeper You've now set up for yeah, the nighttime mode. What have we got here then? So we have the same scope, 80mm uh, APO. On the front, we've got a deep sky dad flip flap. Flippity flap? Which acts as a, a dust shield and then it has oh, a, so a, a dust light. Ah, that's why it's on the way. has a light panel in there as well for taking flat frames and it will just open when you, know, when you want to take your images. Um, we've got a yeah. Zoo Optics ASI 294 MC Pro. So you've gone for one of the small ones, have you? Colour cameras. One of the slightly more affordable <laughs> versions. Um, so that's the Pro, so it's colour and it's got the cooling fan. Colour obviously. and the cooling, yeah. Um, what else? And, uh, and the Skywatch ED50 guide scope with a QHY52 camera. And that all came in your hand luggage? <laughs> yeah, right. Some of it turned up on time. Some of it. Some of it turned up 24 hours later. Practically all of this was in the hold. All of it went in the hold. Um, and uh, everything... M17's the eagle. <laughs> M16. M16's the eagle. 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 So that voice, that voice from the side there, who is asked not to be filmed, is, is Alan Lorraine, who is the, is the BAA president, who is still learning his Messier catalogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a little bit of Andromeda, did a little bit of Andromeda the other day. Hold on, just a minute. Bit of, bit of, bit of connection. Bit of powder. Dovetail, and then you can use it as electronic. <laughs> So Alan's changed his mind. He does want to be filmed after oh. all. I was feeling very left out. So just before we go over to Alan, I'm just going to point out his red filter that he's left just down there. So it's actually in the bottle this time, Alan. Which in is the bottle. Well, it's unusual. not in the bottle anymore. No, it's, uh, it was in the bottle. <laughs> okay, so, so can you talk us through your setup then, Alan? It looks vaguely similar to Ian's. but you've It's, obviously it's very similar to Ian's. Uh, effectively, the telescope is only a 71 millimeter. Uh, Telescope. It's from Williams Optics. Um, I like the like, uh, like all good people. You got a Williams Optics. That's right. Yeah, it's a nice sort of goldy colour. Um, on the back of there, as with uh, other colleagues out here, we've got the uh, so Optics, the uh, the two nine four. You've got two nine four as well. As well, you, yes. Is that on, telling us something? On Lawrence's recommendation, I've got a two nine four. Um, so advantage. So that's on that, and it's on a. Um, Skywatcher EQ5 mount, so it's not. It's one down from Ian's. It's similarly, it's had the one, legs. One down from the Paramount, is it? No, it's one down from Ian's. That's so if it's about ten down from uh, <laughs> Dave's Paramount. Driving it with um, um, Ian's recommendation, the Cart DCL. Oh yes, so that's been driven off the computer as well as the handset. So it's a really nice sort of portable setup you've got here. Really, isn't it? really simple and not too costly either. That's a wonderful. Well, thanks, Alan. Cheers. So what have you been imaging then? What's been your targets of choice this, this week? So really looking for the objects that we can't get from home, the sort of, um, lagoon, the M8. Um, 
in uh, in Sagittarius, um, equal note player. Oh wow, all the classics. So, all the classics. Lovely. So do you have a polar mate, polar alignments, thinking about Bob? Yeah, polar alignment, yes, uh, that, uh, that that does it. So if not automatically, but it works, that um, pole master. Pole master, that's the word I was looking for, that, thank uh, you. It works, it works very well, and what we've been able to do though is be to leave the mounts uh, out each time. I've marked the uh, where the tripod leg, legs are with a pencil. So that if they did get slightly moved, I could always uh, go back to uh, to looking at that later. So you need a sketcher or a visual observer, don't you, to borrow the pencil from? Right, yes, to, uh, to, uh, to borrow the pencil from. But no, it's, it's working very well because it's more as polar. Look, well, it is polar aligned as soon as I set up for the uh, next night. So the bar's open. We're about to go and get some things to eat, and Excellent you're all ready to, to go. Thanks so much, Mark. So we've left the executive end of the observing area. We're down at the the Hoi Yeah, yeah. We're slumming it now. So this is, and you're down here just to get access to power, yeah. and also. We've got this glorious views over the mountain. So, Lawrence, you haven't brought a massive, great, big, huge paramount. No. I even though you have a paramount at home. I do. A mighty. This is a Celestron AVX. This is the grab and go, or grab and, 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 and struggle. So this is your... You haven't got the big 10-inch with you, for obvious reasons. So what have you got here, then? This is an 80 millimeter Mead 5000 series. But this is a, a good... A good 80 mil refractor. And you've got your underslung grenade launcher on the front. So this is the Celestron uh, Star Sense Align. So this helps to calibrate the mount. Oh, so the mount knows where it's pointing. Yeah, so you, it, it points, it takes a picture, it plate solves, it works out the error, it does that at least four times, and then it's, it's calibrated. And then once you've done that, it will then point your tube. Perfect. So you go to wherever and that will, that will line up. But then I use sharp cap to do a plate solve just to finesse the, the pointing through that. Uh, and I understand you too have an ASI 294. It is, obviously the camera of choice. The camera of choice it. for the disc earning, <laughs> yeah, for, for the gentleman a, astronomer. And the, um, the pole, pole master, master, which is also the must have accessory, obviously. You um, either fire up the, uh, the, the app, the QHY app, or you use sharp cap, which has a, a same. Um, it's a bit awkward because I have to spin, I have to take this off to use that obviously, but you take a picky, it says spin the RA by 90, takes another picky, it tells you how to change the bolts to and fro, you change the bolts, everything nudges and it says it's good enough. The only problem I've got is at this altitude, it drops the mount closer to the adjustment bolts, so I've had to move the counterweight up because I was busy oh, doing something and it stopped moving and there was a funny noise and I realised it had clunked into the, the bolt which of course I don't have at home because it's it's pointed up at 52 whatever it is. But it's all working okay? You're happy with what you're getting so far? The main no. reason for the trip was just to, to, to shake down the kit and I'm not, I'm not as advanced as the guys. I just want to make it work and I got some uh, images last night. Uh, what I didn't get were calibration so I'm going to calibrate shortly with my patented so i was going to ask you why have you got your underpants hanging on the on the washing line old school um flat frames and then i can do the darks later and i will go back to the um north america the ngc 7000 and i will capture lots of images of that and i'm also going to play with the electronically assisted astronomy with sharp cap oh the live stacking live stacking yeah, oh wow so you have your dirty underpants ready for your flats Camera I washed them earlier, the I washed them in the sink and they're, they're not too bad. Um, yeah, so tonight will be my first sort of proper get data and then I can process the data. But so this is brilliant, um, you know, um, I must admit I, I, I gave up at 5am, unlike the guys. I just ran out of steam at 5am, but hopefully tonight I'll see dawn, or this morning I'll see dawn. Cool. All right then, thanks Lawrence. Oh, I haven't asked you the standard question. What have you been imaging? So it's just NTC 7000? So far, the North yeah, just, American just, to, just to shake down the kit. While well, you get everything working. Yeah, I'm not quite as precious about targets because it's all fairly new to me. So anything that goes past there, I shall grab it. Perfect. All right then, thank you Lawrence. Thank you. So it's dusk now. We've just come outside and got this beautiful crescent moon against the evening sky. It's really hard to get focused, isn't it? Or is this? Is that what you're doing now? Just focusing? Yeah, trying to, yeah. So as darkness falls we get the telescopes ready and we were sometimes joined by the other hotel guests wondering what we were doing and wanted to look through a telescope and it was a real pleasure to show these beautiful objects, beautiful Milky Way objects. 
The problem I had was sharing a view through the binder viewer. Everyone's got different eye spacing. So I borrowed Lawrence's 8 to 24 millimeter binder zoom. And it's a really useful accessory. I'm definitely going to give this a review once the darker skies return. I love being able to switch from a, a wide angle, low magnification view and then crank over to a high power view. So as darkness falls, the Milky Way rises, and at first glance, this looked like a cloud. It is such a dark sight up here, away from the worst of the light pollution. And one of the benefits of visiting a southerly location like Tenerife is seeing these wonderful objects that, that simply don't rise from back in England. And as it's getting dark, my first target on each night was always Omega Centauri. Now this is a beautiful star cluster, absolutely amazing. It's ginormous, absolutely massive in the eyepiece. And it's classified as a globular cluster. But research has shown that this is actually the core of a dwarf galaxy that has long since been cannibalized by the Milky Way. And its outer stars and dust have been tidally stripped, just leaving this dense core. There's lots of granular structure. You can see it's not spherical, it's this oval shape. So I've got my sketch kit out and recorded the scene. So I've got my dim red light, I've got a mechanical pencil for the stars, I've got a smudging stick for the nebulosity, and inevitably a razor for all the corrections I have to do. So I've also been scouring the star rallies for other objects I simply cannot see from back home, and I stumbled on this object, it's down in Ara, the constellation Ara, and it's a beautiful sight. It's got a small globular, much smaller than Eta Carina in the eyepiece, plus this nebulosity surrounding the star, there's a second nebula separate patch alongside and then this close double star and this is all in the same field of view, all these different objects. And I didn't even know it existed before I stumbled on it just to see if I could see it. Right, my last target was a bit closer to home. This is Comet Panstars in Ophiuchus. And what's really interesting about this is in comparing the view I've got here and Lawrence is just calling, over, calling us over to his telescope where he's got it in, in, on the camera as well. So we have been trying to find Comet Pan Stars in the eyepiece, which we did find. We've seen, seen the Comet Pan Stars in the eyepiece, but Lawrence, you've got a much better way of observing it. Yeah, this is the live cap gel, live stacking, live view. So, so what we could barely see is a small smudge. It's not too bad, is it? You've got the... You can see the little tail, can't you? Yeah. And how long do you take to find that with your go-to plate solving? Oh, we just type the name <laughs> into the car, car, into cart to CL and oh yeah, and it just went. So you must be pleased then, because when we came out, you weren't too sure how to get this all up and running. Yeah, just, just finding interesting things and pointing at them, and within eight seconds, you're getting half, half decent uh, images. They're not you know, particularly well formed, or not pixie quali pix inside quality, but they work. And all through this setup over here, I'm trying not to turn my torch into your camera. Give us another object then, Michael. Which fence? Helix Nebula. In Aquarius, I think it's. Oh, you got helix? Oh, that's a good choice. Yeah. So, just coming up. So this is a thirty second. So that's a bit well, overexposed. Bit too much, is it? I think we'll have to change the levels. The histogram. Oh, look at that! Nice. Ah. You can really see the colours come out there, can't you? There you go. That's quite pretty. Oh, yeah, it's pretty. It's really pretty, yeah. isn't it? You really see the greens and the reds, can't you? And the yellow in the middle. Okay, here we go. Wow! wow. Just auto stretch that. That's amazing, isn't it? It's not too shabby, is it? Goodness me! I've got vignetting. Yeah. Around there, I can probably knock that out a little bit, but and first one fits. How do you knock that out? With you, do you apply your dark? Yeah, the, the calibration frames would get rid of that, but um, they're not. I, c I could apply them here, but there's a lot of faffing around to do that. I've not bothered, but yeah, you can see that around the edge it's building up, but it just gives you an idea of, and you can play with the levels and you can draw out the dark lines. Yeah. So as dawn approaches, we've got the morning planets coming up. And we can also see the zodiacal light, the thin dust that lines the plane of the ecliptic, just being lit up by the sun just before dawn. So it's time to pack away, we'll grab some shut eye, and then we'll do even more observing. So we've got a TAC telescope and a TAC 
eyepiece and we are tracking somewhere up there Venus in the daytime so I don't know if I can see anything in there but it's just a what do you say just a little give you a disc isn't it yeah. but it's amazing to see it in the daytime so what do you think of the telescope then Bob is it your keeper are you gonna keep it oh, I think so <laughs> Well, I'm going to say you're going to have to stop tracking pretty soon looking at that diagonal. Yeah, uh, that will clear, it will clout, it will crash here at yeah. some point. But I Don't take the chance. Yeah. So what are we doing? So we're about to try and do a meridian flip, flip to catch on the other side. So you set that side to zero and then this to 20. And let's give it a go, see if we can catch on the other side. So Bob, we've just decided, is a mental arithmetic genius because we've just done a meridian flip on the setting circles with a bit of head scratching. There it is. It's a tiny little gibbous disc, isn't it? But it's yep. lunchtime and we're looking at the planet. It's so fantastic. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome, much. You like your tack, don't I, you? I do, rather. <laughs> so we've got tack for tack telescope, tack mount. Yeah. <laughs> uh, FS60, Sky90, Mulon 180C, Epsilon 160, so you're FS102. Keeping, keeping Mr. Takahashi in, in And FS152. 152. 152 as well? Oh yeah. my goodness. Missing a 128. Oh, okay. Is that the top trump then? Have you got the... There are others. <laughs> <laughs> others are there. So Bob's going to start a tack museum one day. <laughs> And of course you've got the EM2, EM200 and the EM500. Goodness me. I hope you enjoyed watching that video. It was a challenge to edit a whole week of observing down into one video. Lots of stuff didn't make the cuts. Nightscape, landscape photography, star trails, planetary. But it was such great fun. Excellent company, amazing skies, wonderful place to visit. So if you want to see more videos as we explore the night sky, then don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. So what have you been shooting then this week? Oh blimey, what have we had? We've had M8, which is of course, help me out here Mark. Mate. Mate. All right mate. M16, M17. Sorry, I was a bit behind you there. So, so what have you been <laughs> shooting this? <laughs> so this is just your little grab and go. You put this in the telescope. You, oh, it's like good. Hey. God, that's a big old scary thing. I hope that's not coming to bite me. Well, thanks that. That does look like something that's gonna lay its eggs inside your flesh. No. Perhaps we're not plugged in somewhere. That helps. Here is the man of the hour. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Lawrence. <laughs> just <laughs> completely dazzle you. Is that what you're doing now? Just focusing. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do. <laughs> Am I standing? Oh, you're sorry. Standing? I've just realised I'm standing right in front of Alan's telescope. So if I go down to Alan's telescope, was it very hard to focus if someone stands right in front of it? It is rather, but. Uh...